Okay, so I'm finished up with the front and rear winch uh, setup on this thing, though just how I decided to go with the course, there's absolutely nothing for the X2 on these, so it's all kind of custom, and I couldn't find much on wiring two winches into one switch, so uh, this is over a couple weeks, it's just been so hot out here, 100 pluses for the two solid weeks, so uh, it was some of the things I might have already said, so I'm just going to try to uh, wrap it up. So, of course, I got the just a Polaris winch up in the front here. I don't even know the size. Maybe 2,500. It feels like a 3,500. The synthetic rope, fairy lead, Haas fairy lead and everything. Uh, we'll go back here. I still got to shorten up some of the wires. I did that. Just do the blue and yellow one left and paint the bracket. Just a simple bracket going across because there's tons of room right here. Uh, originally, I was going to put the winch right back here, but uh, I decided to go back to where it was because I didn't really want the it, it being pulled downwards when I start winching. So, along with that... That is all the parts for a RS1 that have to be taken off, so to snorkel it. So that is the uh, winch setup. It is, I uh, went to get ahead and took off all the factory uh, uh, wire rope and then put in the synthetic rope. Those are again the axle paddles from a 300. They got a nice slope up to not really hinder my ground clearance at all. I still can use the two inch receiver hitch there. So uh, just the factory plate mounted to that. And uh, I've been running this winch on my Razor for three years now and not a single issue. If you take a look, it does not stick out past the tires any more than anything else would. It is still tucked up there nicely. I'm not hitting the, uh, the, the shock there and that is still a rubber boot that can be taken away. So fully set up, nice and tucked, still high. Don't lose any ground clearance with that set up. The way I mounted it. So the other thing I got to finish up is taking the power wire right here and I did get a bus bar. That bus bar is going to be for my lights of course running through here. Take one side of the winch run it through here the other side from here back to the battery and I'm going to use this as my battery terminal post because where it's at yeah it sucks. So that's going to be in my new uh, positive and uh, so okay so to do the winch wiring I know I'm talking fast but um, I did only want one switch right here to do my front and rear. So what you need to do is go out and get a double pole, double throw, three position switch. My son sits on this four wheel a lot and he likes buttons of course. So he likes turning the key on. He turns the key on, this thing comes live either way. Either you have it straight to the battery or key to ignition. So with this switch being in the middle position, it does absolutely nothing. When you go to the front, now the front winch works. You want the rear winch to work? Do that. Redirects it. How that's done is very, very simple. Like I said, your double pull. So the with a, a winch, it's got to be um, uh, backwards, or the switch got to be backwards. So this is actually the rear winch contactor that's coming from the solenoid up here to this side. From the switch, being this switch right here, is coming down into the middle post, and then the front winch solenoid is coming up into oh, where's that? I'm trying to get you a good shot of it there. Anyways, it's just these outer two posts right here. That's it. Your power wire stays the same. Your 12 volt key is stayed the same. Which on a Polaris, you've got a few accessory ports up here. That one's 12 keyed. That one's 12 keyed. So running in that. So just to give a little thing there, you got the key on. Right now I'm in the rear, flip to the front, out is out, flip to the middle, safe, can't use it, go to the rear, and out, in. Very simple to do, very handy, front and rear, especially on the, the uh, X2 here. Sorry this camera is really focused inwards, but... Uh, so everything's kind of close up, but the X2 is a long, heavy machine. So I needed, I, I, I just wanted it. Have no issues getting me out now. So that is far as the winch goes. Very simple. Got the uh, 3,500 pound in the front, 3,500 pound in the bit back. All synthetic rope, all Haas Fairlead, and I'm gonna be a little bit easier accessible with my 12 volt to my battery there. But yeah, like I said, I know I was talking pretty fast, but um, I wanted to get this video out today to you guys, so thank you very much for watching. There wasn't much on wiring in the uh, dual winch setup to a single post. I think I said that beginning, which you might have just seen, I did not want really the, the dual 
dual switch up here. I tried all the different ways to mount it, didn't look good, so that is now just simple, clean, ready to go. Thank you guys for watching. And a just a quick little side note, uh, where I mounted the switch was just for the 12 volt accessory plug to go in there. I just took that out, kind of painted up a quick washer real quick, and used that factory hole. And then for this is going to be my rear or my my fans switch setup, so I can do um, turn this way. It's going to be on with the just as normal operation, and then I can turn it this way, and it's uh, 12 volts straight to the fan, so it can never be turned off, but yet I can turn it on when I want. So say if you're sitting in line somewhere you need to go, you just want it to uh, start going down, that's how you do it. And that is with the factory, um, it's choke for the carburetor bikes and the diagnostic port plug for the EFIs. Take that plug out, once again got another just flat washer, perfect size for that hole, and put it in there. And now that is all there. No more drilling into places, making anything permanent. Little tip.